We have heard recently many RVers say they are quitting RV life. Many who have been living full time in their RV for years. Now, there are many reasons RVers are quitting RV life. And of course, many of these reasons can be pretty personal. Today, we're gonna to explore seven of the biggest reasons RVers quit RV life, including some of the most important RV realities you need to know before you begin your own RV living adventure. Let's get into it. Uh, it really feels good to be back in desert snow again. I don't know, it feels amazing. Oh my God, yeah. who is knocking like that? I have no idea. Go check that out. Yes, can I help you? Oh, just a friendly reminder to hit that subscribe button. You two cutie pies are getting so close to your 100,000 subscriber milestone. I want you to get there by Christmas, okay? Hit the subscribe button. Have a nice day. Now, there are quite a few elephants in the room. So I think we should address one of the biggest issues right off the bat, and that's constant maintenance and lack of parts. We can't tell you how many times we've heard from fellow RVers, including ourselves, that uh, hard to get parts, hard to get service because one, they don't have enough mechanics, or two, the warranty parts have been delayed. It just feels so constant. And this RV life is supposed to be about being out there and enjoying the aspects of the RV life, not in a mechanic shop, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and plus it's your home. If you're full-time RVing, this is your home. Home. And so you have to bring it into the shop to get repaired. You have to deal with finding a place to live. Is it an Airbnb? You like get to a hotel room or something? That's costly and expensive. And it's true. I mean, this is your home on wheels, and there's always something wrong. Oh yeah. We've, all, we've never actually had everything working mm -hmm. in our RV, whether it's like the water pump, the heaters, and then of course more recently we had the collision we had to deal with and getting the parts and, as, and repair as part of that. Yeah, and being prepared is hard because you don't know when the actual time frame will be. They might tell you one time frame, but then there might be an extension of a delay, which means that you have to change your plans and figure things out. And if you have pets, it can make it even more difficult to figure out those plans because a lot of places or a lot of rentals, a lot of Airbnb, Airbnbs sometimes may not allow cats, may not allow dogs, may not allow pets in general. So it can right. be pretty tough overall. Next up, financial constraints. Now, while RV living can be a cost-effective alternative, say, to traditional housing, it's not necessarily cheap, y'all. No, it, it, that's very true. It really depends on what your RV lifestyle is like. Mm -hmm. Right. If you do a lot of boondocking, stay put, don't do a lot of driving around the country so you keep your costs down that way, that could be quite cheap. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like how minimalistic do you want right. to go in this lifestyle? Like, or if you like to travel and enjoy the different sites and different, you know, places like we do, it's not necessarily cheap. Things can add up well, quickly. Well, exactly. And then many folks want to stay in fancy RV resorts. So, so things like that, if you expect to be cheap, you'll have the RV resort fees, right? You'll have all the gas prices, like you said, going across the country. Way up. Gas Plus, prices. Right Plus, now, going way up. Right. Plus <laughs> unexpected repairs, things like that. That can add up quickly. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm gonna go back to the gas prices. We just noticed the sticker shock just recently, just driving into Utah. It was crazy. I couldn't yes. believe it. Just just even regular gas was close to five dollars a gallon. I mean, things are going up. So that uh, definitely can cause a lot of stress. Limited space. Living in a confined space like in an RV can be a big adjustment for oh, yeah. everyone. And it's not just folks living in a van like ourselves, but also folks living in class A's. They're coming from a big house, right, into a class A. You have to make decisions on what you bring in, what, what do you sell, what do you move into storage. And that's not easy. No, because right? sometimes you might think you have what you need right now, but then, you know, two months later, like, darn it, why don't I have this? I'm going to need this. Where am I going to find the space for it? E exactly. <laughs> so it really comes down to, like, whether you're living in a small space, a big space, like Dave was saying, you really all have to learn to make adjustments whether it's if you have kids if you have cats if you have dogs you know like for us for instance we got to adjust to some stinky poops sometimes in litter boxes to stinky feet exactly. <laughs> plus our hallway is like about that narrow so it's a one at a time hallway we have to take our turns to go back and forth and yet that still never happens <laughs> Next up, lack of stability. For many, RV living means constantly moving around, and that can lead to a lack of stability and often a, a sense of rootlessness, right? No, I think that's right. I think when folks start RV living, you're thinking, oh, we're gonna travel so we're and travel Let's and go. travel, right? But you're constantly moving, unless you get, say, long-term monthlies or something like that. You might be constantly on the road every 14 days or less, trying to find a new place to stay. You're leaving like new-made friends you may never see again, those types of things. It can be a tough situation. It really can, and you know, to top it off, when you are shifting to that next 
spot, sometimes inevitable things can happen where that spot may be closed, something may have happened, now you're stuck trying to find a different spot. So there's always something that can happen when you're trying to find that next spot and it definitely has a, a, an unstable feeling at times when yes. you're doing that. Absolutely. We're still learning this ourselves. You know, Dave and I, for a while, we really enjoyed, and especially Dave, because he was the planner, all the sights and sounds and smells, we got to see them all in a certain period of time, which means constantly on the move. But right now, we're learning to slow down. And slowing down actually helps us to adjust to loving where you are and really absorbing what's around you, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Because a luster of constantly going from place to place, that can wear off pretty quickly. <laughs> oh boy. Social isolation. You know, we meet so many great people yes. while on the road and traveling and staying at RV parks. And it's like, I get so connected to a lot. It's like when the time goes and everybody's packing up or you see them packing up, you're going your separate ways. Now you might've exchanged numbers and say you're gonna keep in touch with one another, but you're still off traveling and doing your thing. So how often does that really happen? It makes me sad. <laughs> right. No, I think it's very, I think that's a reality of RV living, that that kind of that transient nature when folks are constantly on the move. You meet folks, great people like Tanya said, but then they're gone the next day and that lack of a kind of a stable social network can really feel kind of isolating in a way sometimes. This is a big one, y'all. Health and safety concerns. You know, RV living can definitely present health and safety challenges from exposure to extreme weather conditions on the road to risk of accidents on the road. It's pretty scary. Yeah, no, that's very true. And we, of course, do a lot of four season RV RV living, right? Yeah. We're actually in winter conditions. So for us, uh, we need to pay very close attention to the weather. You know, what's coming on in the weather? Are we gonna be up in the mountains and things like that? And that's very true for anyone really RV living. You know, speaking to that, where's your primary medical physician? Where's your primary care facility while you're on the road? That's a big deal. No, it's it's a very big deal. When we had a home base, right? You kind of knew what doctor you'd call, who you'd go to right away if you got sick or something to get checked out. You kind of had the local hospital, uh, you know, or the local clinic you went to. But now when you're on the road, right? If something happens you have to look up okay where's the nearest medical clinic what are the reviews like is there a doctor to call things like that we find ourselves going to a lot of different medical clinics and maybe like an emergency room visit or things like that at a local hospital which we never really did before burnout Ooh, i know a lot of folks constant travel constant maintenance constant constant let me tell you it can definitely make you feel burnt out it can overwhelm you yeah no that's very true and certainly during the pandemic a lot of folks jumped in yeah. to full-time rv living they'd say we're going rv living we're hitting the road hit the road right? and you're excited you know everything's new and exciting you're visiting really cool places like that shiny toy <laughs> exactly <laughs> but like tanya said it can lead to burnout all the constant travel the planning all the issues we've been talking about that can lead to burnout it really can and if you don't think that is real. Well, that's why a lot of people are uh, quote, calling it quits. Now this one causes me headaches all the time and that is lack of privacy. You know, while it's really wonderful to have your family, your pets, everything really close with you, it's one thing to have them close with you all the time. I mean, there is just zero lack of privacy. You know what, sometimes you need that moment to just decompress. Well, you just can't get that. And that's not just here, but it's also them neighbors. You know, the neighbors at times, it's wonderful, but a lot of times they are all up in the business. All up in the business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's very true. So if you can hear like a folks are arguing next door, you can hear those arguments, right? And so sometimes everybody's can, listening in. They are. Sometimes yeah. you can hear them fire. I'm yeah. just saying, it is that yeah. close. And if they forget to pull up the shades, might get a flash or something. Ooh. Unexpected. I mean, you get a, a wardrobe malfunction. A, a little booty up in the face <laughs> right, right. is not the place. Right. <laughs> right, and sometimes, yeah, you, know, you might need a little space no matter how great your relationship is, right? But in here, it's like, like my space is here, your space is back there, which is like 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And that's not even far enough sometimes because you just, you know, you love each other to death no matter what. That's right. I mean, I put up with them feet. Let me, uh, she puts up with, put up she with, puts up with those feet. I'm just saying. Give me a kid. <laughs> <laughs> now this can be tough for a lot of people, especially if you have a very large family and that's distance from your loved ones. Now that's very true, yeah. right? Being constantly on the move, you know, somewhere across the country and you're, you can be missing important family events and things like that. It's hard to, it can be hard to stay in touch with your family and loved ones. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of times for us too, we have those moments because we are full-time creators, you know, so we're right. always on the go and our life is always an adventure. So thank y'all for being on, you know, right there with us because it's always nice to have y'all because you're part of the family. You know, you don't get bored because you, you got us. That's right, what she said. <laughs> 
but it's really important. I feel it's really important to to do your best to try and stay connected, yes. whether it's rather regular Zoom calls, you know, things like that where you can at least get somewhat connected with the loved ones that you don't see when you're on the road constantly. It, it's a real deal, you know, when folks don't have that general connection to like right. their mom or their dad, especially if their parents are getting older, it can wean on you, you know, and those are definitely big reasons why a lot of folks say, you know, after a while, I just, I can't do it. My parents are getting older, you know, they, I got to be around for them, you know, so I just need to spend more time with them. No, that's it's so changed. true. It's very family true. is so important. You know, without that, you can really kind of feel that lone, that back, that lonely and isolation. Woo! I'm telling you, if I was not as strong like Bull, a woman strong like Bull, I would have quit a long time ago on this one, y'all. And that's limited amenities. You know, RVs are equipped with basic amenities, but they often lack the comforts and conveniences of traditional homes. You know, when you're in an RV, things are small. You get used to them, but after living with them for a long period of time, those small things can feel even smaller, right? No, that's very true. And for us, as an example, we don't have an oven. And so Tanya's got to be super creative. I mean, Tanya does an amazing job cooking, but that's in basically a very small camper van yeah. without an oven. Yeah. You did an incredible job. Thank you. And I need my oven at times, so I have, to, I have to recreate what an oven might look like in a space like this. Yeah. And that's not easy. <laughs> yes. And plus, in a small camper van, you may have a wet bath. So Basically, your shower is like showering right on your toilet. Yeah, it's so which true. Which is just a reality, right? It's so, so true. And yeah. what might feel fine at first, it's like, yeah, I can yeah. deal with this. After a while, you might be like, I cannot deal with this stuff anymore. Like, you know, I didn't say stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, it's, it's kind of the, that moment. And I do feel that that makes it harder for folks to really kind of embrace the life if they're so used to a certain thing and all of a sudden it gets smaller and smaller right. and smaller. Now, for a lot of us that tend to work from the road, well, this is a big deal. And that's inadequate internet connectivity. I cannot tell you how many times after a long drive, we end up in a spot that we think, okay, this is perfect. This is where we're gonna be for the next 10 days to find out that the internet connectivity is terrible and I can't even get one bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it can be a real challenge. And when you have a home base, right? Let's say for your cell phone, you, there may be one provider that has great connectivity in that area. Say, so, okay, I'm gonna get this, this provider. But when you're traveling, it varies so much from provider to provider. You don't know, you might need multiple providers to have that same type of internet access. Yeah, and let me tell you this, there's apps out that can tell you where there's the strongest internet. They don't always work. I can tell you that from experience. There's sections and places we've traveled to where they say Verizon is the best. We're like, yeah, we're good to go. And we get out there and next thing you know, it's not the case or things have changed. So it can dawn on you, you know? So we try to do things and we use, you know, for us as creators, we need that internet. So so we opted for Starlink. Right, we have Starlink. Plus, I mean, it's expensive too. You have Starlink, plus you have some other cell providers because you're constantly on on the move. Yeah, and, and Starlink don't know doesn't where you're always be. work right. in certain areas either. So yeah, if you like, have a lot of tree coverage or things like that, then you're out of luck there. Yeah, so it's always a lot to think about, which can certainly overwhelm a lot of folks in this space. This is probably a good point for me to mention, you guys. We have an incredible community over on Patreon, our Turn It World Insider community. You know, it's a place for us to really grow as a community. We share stories. We can actually now connect via text. We can do via video conference. It's just a great place for us to all to come together, share stories, vent, let it all out. Absolutely. And it's a place to meet great new friends and also potentially travel companions you can meet up with down the road. So we hope to see you there. Definitely. Just www.patreon.com forward slash turn it world. There's different level and tiers. You can check that over there. We'd love to see you over there during our community. You know, we absolutely love the RV life. Now, now, while there's a lot of things that can go wrong, there are a ton of things that can go right. And what makes this community so special and being a part of it, we love it. And we have a question for you. Let us know in the comments below, what are the things about RV living that you find most challenging? Yeah, and if you want a little lightheartedness, one last thing. I know we talked about some things living in this tiny space. Well, we have some embarrassing truths that we think you guys wanna know that not a lot of people talk about, but we do. Just check out that video right there. Mm-hmm, here it comes. All right, y'all, and we'll see you in the next one.